Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here um, on a Sunday uh, morning in Seattle, afternoon on the East Coast, um, and uh, evening in Romania. Uh, thank you for being here um, for the eighth edition of the Romanian Film Festival in Seattle, um, also the first edition of Arizona Romanian Film Festival in Arcs Detroit. Um, we are happy to partner once again for the third time with the UiPath Foundation for the Romanian Film Festival and to bring to you um, such wonderful event with our um, guest and friend, uh, artist, um, art, art, uh, artist and actress, um, uh, Alina Sherban. I'm going to say a few words about um, the uh, UiPath Foundation. Um, they are here in a double capacity because they also um, support the film festival, but also Alina Sherban's multimedia show and play, The Best Child in the World, that is the first play directed by a Roma director uh, that's, that's playing at the Romanian National Theatre. So I'm sure Alina will tell us more about this wonderful accomplishment. The UiPath Foundation was founded by UiPath, the Romanian unicorn that some of you know in January. Uh, 2019. It is a global nonprofit organization with uh, headquarters in Bucharest, Romania. Um, the mission of the UiPath is to uh, support underprivileged children to reach their potential and thrive together with their communities through equal access to education and development. Um, the UiPath Foundation is implementing educational programs that respond to the multiple and complex needs of children confronted with poverty, and they have been working since 2019 in Romania, um, um, in several parts of uh, Romania, in uh, Moldova, in Galatz, Vaslui, and also in Bucharest, in Ferentari. Old and uh, Botoshan, but also in India, uh, starting with 2020. And I'm going, going to say a few words about Raluca Negulescu Balac, uh, who is the executive director of the UIPA Foundation. Um, hi, Raluca, I'm so happy to see you again at the Romanian Film Festival for the third Thank time. <laughs> Thank you, Tia. Yeah, happy to be here again. Thank you. So before working for the UiPath Foundation, Raluca coordinated for nine years comprehensive educational programs for children in disadvantaged communities across Romania under the umbrella of the Policy Center for Roma and Minorities. In 2007, she worked as a junior consultant in a World Bank supported national program focused of, on enable, enabling 250 poorest communities in Romania to keep up with the fast Technology, technological challenges. In 2013, Raluca was a legislative fellow in the US Department of State professional program. And the title of this program is Building Grassroots Democracy in Minority Communities. And she received the annual Human Rights Award of the Embassy, Embassy of France in Romania for her local women empowerment initiative titled Mother's Club. Um, she is also a fellow of the Aspen Institute Romania Young Leaders Program and a member of the Global Shapers Community, an initiative, for those who don't know, an initiative of the World Economic Forum. Um, what an impressive uh, <laughs> uh, CV you have here, Raluca. We're very fortunate to have you with us. And uh, now I'm going to um, say a few words about Alina Sherban, her impressive career as well. Um, and I'm sure uh, I won't mention everything. It's her, she, 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 her activity is so rich, right? And um, I hope my colleagues will put a link uh, in the chat with her website so you can explore more what she's been up to. Um, Alina grew up in Bucharest, Romania. She had tremendous obstacles, including poverty and discrimination, and she became the first member of her Roma family to graduate from high school and university. After she got a drama degree in Bucharest at the Academy of Theatrical Arts and Cinematography, she attended the Tisch School of the Arts in New York, and she obtained a master's from the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. 
as a professional actress, um, Alina's uh, credits include numerous Shakespeare plays under the artistic direction of uh, Philip Parr, as well as productions presented at the European theater festivals. And I'm sure you've seen the, uh, uh, how powerful her art is as a, an actress in the short that we just saw. Um, for her first leading role in cinema, she stars Marta Bergsam's in, in Marta Bergman's feature film, Alone at the Wedding, which premiered at Cannes um, in 2018 and earned several Best Actress, Actress Awards. And she also stars as a boxer in Hussein Tabak's Gypsy Queen. And I'm sure many of you uh, saw this film at the Romanian Film Festival last year. As a playwright, she pioneered Roma feminist political theater with three plays to her name by the age of 29. So, well, Alina, congratulations. And I also um, want to mention the short uh, that you presented last year at the Romanian Film Festival um, about um, uh, Roma slavery in Romania. Truly wonderful work as well. And I think there were the most uh, viewed, you know, films in the festival last year. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna um, start by asking you a common question. Um, since you are both uh, friends uh, of the Romanian Film Festival, can you tell us um, what you have been up to, you know, in the last year? Should I start? Is yes. that okay? Yes. Um, in the last year, besides all the refusals I got <laughs> and the, uh, and the hardship uh, of uh, being an independent artist, of trying to uh, put my stories uh, in the world. Luckily, luckily, um, I also uh, met people that believed in my uh, in my work, such as the UiPath Foundation. And uh, I was working uh, on a theater play called um, The Best Child in the World. And uh, it won a contest at the National Theater called uh, 9D, the new generation is called. And um, so the selection meant that I could, um, I should produce a play uh, being helped by other people, by other funders like UiPath Foundation. And, um, and then if the committee from the National Theater Bucharest would like it, then I would uh, be part of the National Theater. And this happened. I was uh, then, now I'm part of their program. And uh, luckily next year in January, we will have a official premiere of this theater play called The Best Child in the World, which would be the first um, play written and directed by a Roma woman to enter the National Theater of Bucharest. And so this was uh, the months that passed uh, in this autumn that I worked uh, really very intensely on this theater play. And um, what you just um, had, um, and I'm very, very happy to, to have shared uh, I Matter with you as well. It's my second short film. Um, I hope I Matter would, uh, would have um, let's say a better future than uh, uh, it's than the initial steps that the, the film had in Romania um, I got some refusals uh, with this um, with my second short film which was very painful for me and also uh, it can uh, it speaks volume about the situation uh, of what means really to be still creative woman and Roma. Um, so yeah, I'm still trying to tell my stories and I'm very glad to, to meet people that believe in it and, um, and that hopefully life is not just full of refusals, but it's also full of people that understand what I'm trying to do and support this. Wow, thank you so much, Alina, and congratulations. This is, this is an amazing accomplishment, you know, to be, yeah. Uh, it's, it's really amazing. So we, we are here to root for you. 
we are watching <laughs> your your career and um, hope to to help in any way that uh, is possible from us for us from here actually so raluca would you like to go next and tell us what's new with uh, your work at the through the ui path foundation yeah uh, thank you for um for the question, Otilia, very happy to see you all online and especially very happy to see Alina. I've known her for more than 10 years now and I do remember how immersive her first plays about her childhood, about the barriers she had to face were. It, it's really uh, um, an incredible artistic journey she has been through. And uh, we are very happy at UiPath Foundation to partner this year. Um, in uh, supporting uh, the best child in the world. And this is very much connected to our mission as an organization, because we support children who struggle with poverty across Romania and India to understand and develop their potential through access to quality education. And definitely Alina, she's a role model. And while we work with children uh, from um, uh, all um, um, ethnic groups, including Roma and Hungarians, um, we do think that for, for the Roma children, Alina is, is an incredible role model. And we do need more Roma artists to, um, to make these children feel represented in art as well. And I think this is uh, this is incredibly powerful, and I'm happy to be here and just to provide sort of a, a zoom out perspective on the challenges that children across Romania are facing, especially uh, following uh, the impact of the pandemic. So, because you've asked um, uh, me, Otilia, what we've been up to at UiPAD Foundation in the past year, first of all, we we focused a lot on tackling what what has been happening in terms of devastating effects um, amongst children uh, struggling with poverty um, in regards to access to education. Um, the latest data from Eurostat, the statistics agency of the um, uh, European Union shows that um, because of the pandemic, the number, the, the a percentage of children struggling with poverty across Romania increased by around 6%. So basically right now in Romania, we have 41.5% of the children um, at risk of poverty, which means that the dimension of, of the issue we are, are trying to tackle is, is even higher than when we started as an organization three years ago. So um, we, focus, we focused extensively on um, reacting and building uh, new ways to connect children to online education and provide quality content. And while, um, while the pandemic had so many negative um, effects, we've also seen um, an opportunity in bringing quality education, even in the most remote areas of Romania, in, in counties such as Vaslui, in the villages, in, in Botoshan, Old, uh, but also in, in the bigger city where you have these uh, communities that still struggle with, with poverty despite um, um, an overall um, um, economic development of the, the urban areas um, across Romania. And we've been uh, focusing on um, partnering with Brio, which is an online platform for standardized assessment to um, bring to Romania a, a unique um, initiative, which is focused on uh, assessing the digital competencies of children from the first to the 12th grade in such a way that we can better understand we, how, um, what's the uh, uh, state of the nation in terms of, of digital competences and how we can work um, at the systemic level to tackle this because unfortunately children from, from poor families were affected the most when it comes to access to quality education and digital competences are part of the skill set they need for for uh, for the future this is in a nutshell what we've been doing yes wonderful um i um i would like to ask you a question now about the common elements and the suffering of the minorities you know you work with uh, and what are the differences? I know the Roma minority has been, um, has a 
I would say the special status because of the history of slavery that is behind it. But um, other, you know, what are the differences and similarities between all these ethnic minorities and also social groups that face social discrimination because of their being poor and their privileged status? Uh, so what, what are the common elements and different elements in the, you know, in the uh, groups that you work with? Yeah, I, I don't want to take uh, much time because I, I'm sure Alina has a lot of, of insights into this work because she's very connected to um, Roma communities across the country. And I, I know that she she took some of her place to, to these communities, including to some of the teenagers in uh, from the Ferentar neighborhood, which is a very poor area of, of Bucharest. Um, we work with about, uh, we work with children who struggle with, uh, with poverty and we look at this vulnerability um, uh, status in terms of access to uh, financial resources and the struggle that families have. But then we look at other layers that are, um, um, are real barriers in their, um, in their uh, efforts to, to stay um, connected to uh, what's happening around them in terms of education. Um, and about 30% of the children we work with uh, nationally are of Roma ethnicity. And we see this layer of, of um, that is, is connected to an increased vulnerability um, because they face a lot, of, a, a lot of discrimination when it comes to um, to their uh, to their opportunities. So um, and um, this is very much connected to uh, institutionalized racism that unfortunately is is present in in Romania. And um, while um, all the children in our programs have uh, various difficulties in um, in accessing quality education and uh, they have uh, common barriers when it comes to uh, they, they, their daily survival. Uh, the Roma children have an extra layer of vulnerability and um, even, even the data in, in Romania show this. And I, I think Alina can, can share with us uh, more details uh, from her own story, but also from what she has seen in, in the communities where she, she goes and she presents her art and she has meaningful debates with uh, with children and, and youth there. Thank you, Raluca. Um, Alina, would you like to um, uh, talk from the perspective, you know, of, of the community that you represent? Uh, we can't hear you, <laughs> you need to unmute yourself. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, there are many, obviously, barriers that Roma, children and young people are facing. And it's definitely starting from what means basic needs and uh, worrying about next meal shouldn't be a reality for any child. But then besides the, as, as Raluca was mentioning, besides the, besides poverty, means also being rejected by other people. So it's one thing to be discriminated at, at the social level when we mean poverty, but then you are also rejected by the society and you, you don't know about your history. You don't know, your, you cannot maybe sometimes talk, uh, speak in your traditional language because this is not really something uh, that we um, we encourage people to be diverse. Diversity is not, still not encouraged in Romania, I would say. Also, um, what you hear basically from the outside is that you are bad as a Roma because all the sayings that are still in, in our language, such as, if you don't behave yourself, I'm going to send you to the gypsies. Don't be a gypsy. You behave like gypsies and all that is uh, current still in, in our day-to-day day-to-day conversation. I didn't, I didn't want to behave like a gypsy. So obviously, uh, and this is, is our things, these are things that I, I still hear today uh, in the professional world. 
so I do not even want to imagine what is in the where is not so much wokeness and education. But I can tell you from my family side is that I have niece and nephews that dream to be in the class with the Romanians. As you know, segregation is still a problem in Romania. And um, because they, the children see that they are not in the class with the Romanians, they see the Romanians as, as being superior, as being something that is hard to attend. And I myself, even at this, at my age and after my so-called accomplishments, let's say, yeah, I still suffer uh, from an uh, inferiority complex that racism is putting on you. And um, there, this is a very complex like world and barriers that the children and young people and even adults are still facing. It's just that what I can speak of but very superficially in comparison to the Hungarian community as I have some friends and I have seen in my tours is that um, there are regions where Luckily, the language, the Hungarian language is more embraced than the Roma language and the culture as well. And, and also politically, the parties, the Hungarian party is a bit more stable. And also financially, Hungarians, the minority, the Romanian Hungarian minority are more stable than it ever been in this other side. So obviously, if we talk about education, we need to talk about economics. So, and, and this it's being seen even in this, especially in this pandemics, in this pandemic. Um, po poverty leads to no access or very bad access to education. And then obviously it has consequences over the, conditions of life per se for the future and all that and you can see these differences in 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 people's lives and how they get access to education or not even even today i see parents romanian parents that struggle with their children because anyway online schooling is hard it's definitely hard and some and mo many many students i bet for them is also hard because they cannot understand the lesson as they will understand it live at school. Because obviously being in education means to have this transfer of knowledge, to have this communication between you and the, and the teacher and all that. But imagine that a Roma child goes home and maybe his parents haven't had the chance themselves to, to be to be in school. So who will guide this child to make it homework, his homework? So, so on and so forth. Obviously it's, there are many, many layers of this, uh, of this problem. I do not wish to, uh, to be the um, killer of joy in this discussion, <laughs> but I can only speak about my experience and the, and the experience of people I know. Right. Thank you so much, Alina. And I think um, um, talking about the role of parents um, in um, in the education, uh, you know, educational programs, that's uh, really important as well, right? It's um, and I'm thinking about uh, Teodora Mihai's uh, documentary, "Waiting for August," that you you probably uh, saw, where these kids are left alone to fend from themselves while their mother is in Italy working, and they, it's really impressive how they're trying, they're really struggling to go to school actually and to keep up with with their homework. Um, and I think the, the what you're saying is is really a phenomenon, systemic, you know, phenomenon in Romania that needs to be addressed. You know, the, that the fact education is also a partnership between the state 
um, you know, the Ministry of Education, but also parents and uh, or NGOs that can help uh, these kids, you know, in their ways, you know, in the way of becoming, you know, because if there is no support network support for them, like you said, nobody to help them, you know, home, you know, how, how can they thrive, right? How, how can they thrive? Um, yeah, so talking about film now, I'm going to ask both of you, what is the, ro the role of art, you know, in bringing awareness to the these issues, you know, in, um, in our societies, you know, both um, um, uh, Alina, I'm, I'm sure you can tell about your, tell us more about your artivism, that what you call artivism, so activism through art, right? And also, Raluca, maybe you can tell us why the UI Path Foundation Foundation supports, uh, you know, Alina Sherban's, uh, you know, work, you know, and the Romanian Film Festival to promote films, documentaries that um, tackle social um, issues. Why is that important? What is the connection between art and activism and change in the world? How can we generate change through art? Yeah, of quite a tough question, Otilia, and I, I will start. Um, I think uh, we need more arts to really dive into the challenges that these kids are facing. I think um, art creates um, uh, a path to empathy that enables the audience to really understand what's happening in, in the lives of, of children and adults who struggle with, with poverty, racism, discrimination. Um, we, we work in six areas of Romania. We plan to expand it to uh, um, more than, than 18 counties in, in the following uh, years. We also work in India and we provide this integrated um, uh, package of support because we see how many challenges the kids have in terms of uh, food, um, in terms of um, school supplies, uh, tutoring, uh, all this puts uh, an enormous burden on, on families and many times um, uh, drop out of school is a better option than staying in, in, in in a system that uh, just sees these kids, but um, in school and their uh, their difficulty in coping with with the challenges and the requirements of the system, but never understand what's behind. Why is this child lagging behind? What? Uh, why is she trying? Um, why is she, she can't keep up with the um, with what's happening in school? And I think that art has this incredible power to show us what's behind, and. Um, just understanding the, the complexity of, of these barriers is something uh, I think it's something very important that can move us as a society to action to try to tackle this um, huge uh, issue that we're facing. And if we don't understand that this is our common responsibility, it's a collective responsibility and it entails collective collective action, then um, we will just face a future in which, um, more than 60% of the children um, in Romania will not graduate from, uh, from high school. We will face um, a future in which Romania will continue to have more than 40% of the adults um, dealing with uh, functional illiteracy, which means they know how to read, but they don't understand the content and they can't uh, take ownership of, of their lives because uh, they don't have the proper tools and skills to do that. So I, I think we need art to become more empathic as societies and also to, to see how we um, build together uh, consistent interventions that tackle the complexity of, of poverty. And if we will be able to open our eyes and hearts to art forms such, such as the ones that Alina is building with so much compassion and by putting her heart out there and um, giving us this emotional journey, I think we, we will be better off uh, as, as societies as well. And I think it's, uh, we need uh, more of this to, uh, to become more responsible and aware of, of what's happening around us. 
Thank you so much, Raluca, for uh, this uh, great uh, comprehensive answer. And um, I, I really like, you know, the numbers. I think the numbers are crushing. 60% of the people, it's it's really uh, an emergency call. We, we really need to, to act, right, uh, now. I mean, it's, <laughs> yes. Just, I, I really want to pass the virtual microphone to Alina. Just yeah. wanted to uh, share with you that these numbers are based on the data um, collected um, um, uh, this year related to the generation that started school in Romania 12 years ago. Only 41% uh, of the children who started school 12 years ago managed to, um, uh, to graduate from high school. So that's if this is not uh, if this is not painful to us as individuals and as society, then it's just for me it's, it's just overwhelming not to to react and act based on on this data which um, show us a, a really um, a sad uh, future as a country. And I think we have all the tools and all the knowledge to shift, you know this this reality and we can do this together by supporting uh, children in poverty to have access to quality education. And Alina, please uh, I for, uh, forgive me for intervening again. No, thank you very much, Raluca. I, um, I completely agree and it, it worries me and it pains me what you say, especially because I myself, for me was, almost impossible to be where I am. I lived in a hut, in a real in a real hut. And the prospects of going to university were zero to impossible. But um, I am such a privileged person, even in that in in my huts, I still had a privilege that my cousins didn't have which was a mom and a dad that went to school and that fought for my education and knew that my only way out was education. And even though electricity was something that I wished for and hot water, which is something that nobody should wish for, um, I still had some protection that others in my yard didn't. Like my cousins that got married, early marriage is still a problem in the Roma community that is linked to Roma slavery. So let's not forget this. And, um, and definitely it's, it's a very painful, painful, painful subject. And that brings me to my, my tool, which is, which is art. I am not in the position to create laws. I'm not in the position to build the houses I wish I could for people and build the schools and all that. I can only have as um, tools our stories. And I do believe in stories because besides of the empathy that Raluca was mentioning, you finally um, get to hear the voice of the person that you haven't heard before. The person that, so if, if I talk about a Romanian person, let's say, and they always have heard, if you don't behave yourself, I'm gonna send you to the gypsies. Here I am, I am that person that you were scared, <laughs> uh, you were threatened to, to uh, to have uh, as a bookie man, yeah? So isn't it sad, right? To, to see what it's like that, to see that others don't have minimal things like electricity and hot water, I say, yeah? And then to hear about themselves that they are, um, in, I don't know how to say this in English, intrinsic, um, in a way like spoiled as a human. You are not, you, you didn't pick the, the lucky card. 
being born this way in Romania. So this, this gives me the opportunity to only reach for what I have in hand, which is theater and film. And I wanted to tell people that I am exactly like them. I am human too. I have desires and, and I have uh, pains that you haven't got to, to hear because what you heard since, the, am I, and I'm speaking about the Romanian, let's say, you heard that I am the boogeyman and the boogie woman comes and says, hey, you know, I wish I had hot water. And that brings us to a very, very universal feeling of, oh my God, you're going through this. And I had this all my life. I've never questioned what it's like not to have it. So I, I completely agree with what Ralupa says in, in terms of the fact that one cannot live alone. You cannot thrive living in a mansion and on your street, someone to be hungry. This is not possible because this is how the universe works. We are linked. And, and that's why even today it pained me to hear this, this numbers and, and to understand the situation and to even see, as I said, my niece and nephews wishing to be in the Romanian class with Romanians, to be with them as if they are, as I said, the superior, the beautiful, cleaner, all that jazz, that <laughs> all that racism, that racism put on in our minds and in our hearts. I would want to also comment on the fact that during this pandemic, racism against Roma people has risen. And I could see the easiness of simple jokes that uh, uh, seem simple, but they, they're not, they're racist, were circling uh, the Facebook and calling us as I am used to be called a crow. So messages like the crows brought the virus were circling the internet that uh, we, we should have all been killed in the Holocaust. Um, so the media and even the ex-president uh, Trajan Bocescu really did not help during the pandemic to bring peace and I don't know, some kind of a, not even reconciliation, it's just normal messages, informations. We, we needed information during the pandemic. We did not need more hate. But I myself, each time they were speaking about the people working in the front line, the, the first line workers or something like this, they were never mentioned that that first line of workers had also Roma people. Roma doctors, um, people working in stores, people cleaning the garbage. Those were the only people at one point on the street. Roma workers taking the garbage out and a lot of them got infected with COVID. But what, um, and, and again, I also seen the, the police violence against Roma people during the pandemic and how now they finally had them a reason to go inside people's houses. And even though putting them in handcuffs, they still beat them while they were on the floor in handcuffs. But they had the reason now to be violent. So uh, it pained me a lot to see that everybody um, I'm sorry, when I say everybody, I mean general media, 
in uh, Romania um, was uh, speaking very easily about home homeschooling, like online school. And um, they were not speaking like uh, Rebecca, uh, sorry, Raluca was, was mentioning. They, nobody was really speaking about what we, do we do with these children that don't have running water to wash their hands. Everybody was saying, ah, oh, stay home, as if home was nice and uh, cozy for everybody. Not mentioning the violence that women face at home. So it was infuriating for me to, to see that the world in the media, let's say, it's one world and the real world is somewhere else as if it's separated. And then each time I was asked, oh, Alina, how, how are you handling the situation as an artist? I didn't want to speak as an artist because it was not about me. Oh, I, I don't get to perform. Sorry, That's, that was not the reason to cry. <laughs> Sorry, for me, it isn't. I definitely, each time I took the microphone, I spoke about people that don't have running water. And the message is wash your hands as often as possible. Can we, can we talk about that instead of, and, um, and also the homeless people in the streets of Bucharest. Again, nobody was mentioning them either. They were all saying, stay at home, which home? <laughs> which home for them so obviously I was infuriated with myself as well because I didn't know what to do for others and again I turned my fury to what I am trying to do as best as possible which is telling stories and um, if you don't mind me mentioning this I, I did a, a comic book thinking of a small girl like I was seeing her home uh, demolished. I know what it's like to be evacuated. And I was thinking of the people in Tatarut, which is a community of Roma people in Cluj that again, uh, were very, uh, faced a lot of discrimination during the pandemic and the police violence and, and also the messages were not going there. And so it was very, we were again, not equal even in, in, during that time. And you could see inequality very, very, very easily displayed and also racism because the racism against Roma people is still so normal that if I am questioning it now, I am the crazy person in the group. I am being diffi difficult. <laughs> So what I could only do was to bring attention to a subject like this in telling a story. And I couldn't say it via film or theater because obviously we couldn't create in that way back then. And the only thing I could do online was with another friend who is an amazing filmmaker. And we did a comic book called Home. And it has these characters. It has a girl that uh, out of an accident, she lives uh, close to um, the pile of garbage, just, ha just like the people in Patarut are living. And uh, by, through an accident, she uh, has her um, bucket, the bucket of uh, water um, broken. And this brings a huge problem in her life because that bucket of water was brought from far away. And I wanted her to fight for a bucket of water so we would understand what it's like to have that as a problem. And then she meets this uh, homeless person. And then they both meet also a, a girl from the child support system which again, we, we do not speak about how the, the situation for children in institutions like this. 
and how I think the numbers there are also very, very high of like the girls who live the social care system are most of the times victims of trafficking. How many of them die still in the child support system and nobody cares because then again, there are no, no one's children. And uh, during the pandemic, for them was very hard as well. They were closed in, in that home, not having the possibility to connect with the NGOs that they work with, sometimes getting the therapy or classes and all that. So the situation at, at, the, at this um, category of people, so their life was already hard, but the pandemic made it worse, obviously. And we could see the, the inequality being displayed in such a, and that's, that's the fury that I have, that inequality is so normal still. In, it should be shameful. <laughs> it should be shameful. Thank you, Alina. It's, it's so heartbreaking to hear. And we, we all know, I think, living in Romania, we know, mm. we all know wh what you are talking about and how um, true it is what you're saying, that we are, we are not saying things as they are, right? We, we, exactly. Not, it's about truth telling, right? Um, and I think that's why it, it's so important to talk about it to say what's the, what the problem is actually. So, and I know a lot of people have questions. There's the, the chat is firing up, the Facebook is firing up. So we're gonna open the floor for uh, questions. Um, Raluca and uh, Alina, thank you so much for bringing um, this um, debate from Romania, you know, for us not to, to remember and to keep on talking about it and bringing films that um, talk about these basic needs that children need, you know, in order to, to, to be functional adults, not even to thrive, actually. It's about being a functional adult in a healthy society. So unless we, we, we face the, the truth and we tell what's really going on, you know, during the pandemic, and I think this brought up not only Romania, but everywhere. This brought up a lot of things all over the world. Um, I think um, um, in Romania is, is special to us because we come from there and we know the reality is there, but um, um, we, we can relate to other parts of the world as well, of what's going on. So please go ahead and ask questions to our guests. I see that um, Juana has her uh, hand up. So go ahead. And also there's uh, questions in the chat that we can address. Thank you, Otilia, and thank you, Alina and um, Raluca. Um, the first question I had, everything that you're talking about is not um, uh, unknown to us, right? Um, here in the US, we see exactly the same problem with people from BIPOC communities, uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Um, we're dealing with um, just this year, we had the big wave of Asian hate, a lot of people, uh, you know, taking issues with um, people from Asian communities. So everything that you're talking about, it's experienced here, um, albeit, you know, with different um, uh, community groups. Um, however, what I've noticed that happens here more than it happens in Romania, and I want to, I want you to help me confirm that, is that here people have from these disadvantaged communities um, have somehow found their voice and taken to social media and community grass, grassroots um, um, events um, to really come out and say that they are proud of their heritage and and make that known whereas in Romania at least my experience is that if people do achieve um, people from um, a Roma background for example uh, or Roma uh, individuals have great achievements they don't necessarily make a point about them coming from a um, disadvantaged background and saying you know I am Roma I didn't have a good up um, uh, um, 
um, healthy upbringing because I had to deal a lot with uh, social barriers and challenges around discrimination, segregation, and so on. First of all, so, and I have friends, personal friends that I don't know them to, to talk much about uh, being Roma, although they are exceptional people with great achievements. They just don't shout it of the, of the top of the mountains, you know, I'm Roma and um, this is what I achieved. Because I believe that when you do that, representation matters. And the more we talk about it, the more people see it happening, the more they open up about it and we, we uh, bring down the taboos. First of all, am I wrong? Is that happening in Romania? Am I wrong? Is it what I'm seeing from over here? Is it wrong? Or do people talk a lot more about their, um, with pride about their Roma, um, about being Roma? Um, and two, if they're not, why do you think that is? And what can we do to get them to proudly say, I achieved all this, I am Roma and I'm so proud of it. And I, if I can do it, you can all do it. I will start with the second question because it responds to the first one as well. It's a context problem. Obviously it's linked to the situation. If everybody tells you, if you don't behave yourself, I'm gonna send you to the gypsies. And if we still have a problem with diversity today, obviously nobody wants to be part of that. So. The Romanians are not part of, hey, come out, Roma, be, be proud. What? Why are you not proud? Come on, hey. <laughs> Romanians are not part of that. So obviously the Roma person is like, okay, I just need to survive. I just need to survive, blend in, breathe, breathe out, blend in, and survive as best as you can. My own brother told me not to speak with my niece and nephew about their roots, their Roma roots. It pained me a lot, but who am I to judge on someone's parenting? I think this speaks volume. What also happens is that uh, I myself started my career around 12 years ago when it was definitely crazy. And Raluca knows me back from the, those times when it was definitely almost crazy, not cool, very not cool to speak about your roots. And I myself put my, my family in danger for until let's say three years ago. All this time, my mom, each time I was going publicly speaking about I myself being a Roma, about our past, about the fact that she has a criminal record. She has always trembled thinking that we will get evacuated. We will get evacuated. Alina, what are you doing with this art? So I myself felt ignorant to her pain ignorant to my, my very reality. I don't know how to, yeah. And, and even in a certain, I don't know, child, childness, uh, in a child, childlike mind, I pushed on my art without really thinking of the consequences that I'm bringing over my mom's life and even myself. Of course, having the legitimacy of, of my stories, I forged onto creating change through this history, through these stories. It pains me as well to see some people that we all know they're Roma and they don't mention they're Roma. But it's, it's up to them to, uh, to acknowledge their ethnicity publicly. Uh, it, I don't think it's, I, I am not the person to say it's your responsibility because I, it's not up for me to judge. It's just that in the same time, there are two things I've, I've noticed. 
when I started, it was, as I said, dangerous and people were looking at me as if some of the people I started with, they were looking at me as if this was not even art what I was doing. Because the subject is so taboo and touchy, they will be like, no, is if I'm only doing uh, classical plays, it's art. But what are you doing? This is contemporary theater. What is this about Roma? This is not art. <laughs> and then it was another wave that we are now facing, which is a wave of, I would call this, I would call this business. Being Roma for the business, which is, which is um, now that there are some, uh, let's say, um, funding for diversity per se, many people that were not Roma are Roma all of the sudden. Many people that were not Roma go to universities and ask um, for like a special uh, place to be admitted on a Roma place. So, don't know what to say. It's, um, and I can even, even comment on the fact that this business <laughs> that became, and it's very like disgust, I feel some kind of a disgust where, when I see this, because it's obviously superficial, it's for, benefiting only them as people and sometimes even paint the, um, the topic itself because somebody will say and, and will be like, yes, uh, Roma men are very bad. I am the voice of Roma women. And then the non-Romas would listen because obviously there are not so many, many stories. So it creates very a big imbalance, imbalance on what is being told. And that's why, as Raluca just mentioned before, we need a lot of art and we need a lot of people. So then we can differentiate between voices and messages. But at the end of the day, because things are not just black and white, they have nuances. I would still prefer the Roma that became Roma only for the benefit, for the business, than the Roma who's always hiding because they want to protect their CV. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will be on the side with the, with the business one because at least if young people hear them and they see something that they like in those ones, even though I find superficial and they're problematic and all that, all that, all that, at least it, for representation, it might mean even a dim, a very, very small, small change. And I am, I am for that. Alina, I have a question um, talking uh, as we were talking about not only important importance of art, but also in education. And I'm also wondering um, if Raluca knows more, because I feel like there's no educational materials to instruct the kids early on about discrimination and racism, not only for we're talking about Roma kids, but for everybody. And I think this is something that we have been doing in the States. Uh, kids are, in, you know, are taught how to respect diversity and how to celebrate it and how to embrace it. And it's really at the national level, at the educational level. So before making art, I feel like, do we need, do we have in Romania uh, pedagogical materials to talk about it at the early on you know, stage in, in education when you start? So it's a form of literacy first you know, that can, should go through schools and NGOs. So Raluca, can, do you know anything no. about it? How is this sector? I know we, well, I have been working with Qualte Cuvinte. They have been uh, great in publishing a few, a few books, but it's only a few books, you know, about the Roma, uh, the history of Roma slavery or, you know, but it's such a timid 
you know, initiative, actually, to informing kids through books, uh, you know, developing literacy early on. Yeah, that's, I, I, I don't think it's a question necessarily of resources, uh, because in the curriculum, we've been including uh, at national level, all, all kinds of, of resources related to diversity. So basically any child in Romania should go through an educational journey in which um, uh, they learn about, uh, about diversity. But then I think it's very much about educating the teachers and the parents and enabling them, you know, to make the most out of these resources. And um, I think this is uh, one of the issues uh, we're encountering in, in many communities where we also work, that teachers are not um, very prepared when it comes to understanding, you know, all these uh, issues. And um, I think we can advance in, in, in this area, working more um, on the quality of, of providing this kind of resources. And we can work on educating parents as well, because uh, uh, many times there are dynamics you can see between children that reflect the stereotypes they hear at home. And then, uh, of course, that the root cause is the a flawed educational system that fails, you know, to really embed diversity in, in, in our lives as, as, as children and as adults. Um, but I, I do think... Um, the educational system also reflects the, the, the larger dynamics in, in the society. And um, it takes a certain level of maturity as a society to be able to tackle this topic in, in a balanced way and to, to admit all the challenges. And I think just maybe in the past 10 years, we had the Roma slavery included in the history books, for instance, um, we barely touched this topic when I when I was in in middle school, for instance. So this is this this is what what's happening. And I think there are many uh, voices of uh, Roma young activists um, in the past ten years that have been um, growing, and they will definitely shift the the discourse. And um, while there are uh, situations, as the one mentioned by Alina, I know myself. Um, young Roma activists that they were kids 10 years ago when I met them. They're in their early 20s right now. They are using art to articulate a powerful message and to uh, state why, why it's important to, to embed diversity in, in everything uh, we're doing and living in, in this country. So I am rather hope, hopeful about it. And I know some of these uh, young artists, some of them in, um, coming from from of Ferentari as well. Um, so yeah, th this is my takeaway on, on diversity. And I know that there are some amazing books that were created to um, stimulate this uh, public debate about diversity. Um, and I've also worked with Walter Kubinte uh, to develop such a book, uh, co-designed with, with Roma kids in the, in the process. And it was so powerful to, uh, see how uh, happy uh, they were to be represented in, in a book. I mean, to read something about, uh, about themselves. And I think we need more of that, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, I'm I um I'm sorry, but we'll have to wrap up. We we passed uh, by a lot actually the, the meeting time, um, and um, I think uh, again, I mean, if our call in this um, uh, session is that we need you know awareness that can be done through education. Education for diversity means education for em empathy. And if we start there, we will have, you know, a healthier society. And I'm not talking only about Romania. Of course, Romania has its own particularities that we know because we come from there. But we uh, and we we should we should look at other models. What has been done in the U.S., you know, in terms of empathy and how the civic society uh, functions, because everybody plays a role. Everybody does their part, you know, in uh, in uh, making this society work. Actually, and um, thank you, Alina, for your art, your artivism. Uh, we're looking forward to. Um, 
following you, you know, your, your films, your art, please um, like her on Facebook and um, um, support her uh, work in every way that you can. I know the UiPath Foundation is doing that already. And um, again, we're, we're happy to, um, to have you with us for the third time, uh, Raluca and Kodruca and uh, everyone involved and also Alina. Uh, this is at least the second time, I think, but we have been collaborating <laughs> uh, uh, quite well. So again, everyone, uh, please follow Alina Sherban, the UiPath Foundation work and um, our festival. You can also watch Waiting for August as we talked about the role of parenthood and the, the abandoned kids actually that are uh, left alone in Romania. It's about 75,000 uh, who are left alone in Romania to, you know, to upbring themselves. Actually, no parents, no support from the state. So, um, yes, yeah, so I hope you'll watch our films and uh, this recording will be uh, uh, live. On, I mean, we'll still be on Facebook. Please share it and on our YouTube channel. So thank you again. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank you very you. much for having me. Bye bye. Thank you, Alina. Bye. Thank you, Raluca Kodruta. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mary. Thanks.